This is the Sony 24-70 G Master Mark II lens that has a price tag of $2,300. And I know what you're wondering, is it worth the price tag? Well, stick around because I'm gonna show you why this has now become my go-to lens for at least 90% of my shoots. Hello, you beautiful humans. It's Gem Lang here and welcome to my video. Today, we are talking about the Sony 24-70 G Master Mark II. Wow. What a lens. When I was researching the Sony 24-70 G Master Mark II, I was just blown away by the image quality and the sharpness that was coming from a zoom lens, especially in the early days when it was just announced and coming from Sony and also other reviewers on YouTube. Not only is it the world's smallest and lightest 24-70, it also is incredibly sharp and has fast AF autofocus. Why don't we have a look and see what it can do? So that was for a client shoot that I recently did where I was using the Sony FX3 combined with the Sony 24-70 G Master Mark II. The FX3 recently updated to the firmware 2.0. Oh, I already loved that camera, but now I just love it even more. But that is for another video. If you haven't updated your firmware, go and do it. Highly recommend. Anyway, having the G Master Mark II 24-70 with the FX3, it was just perfect for being able to run and gun, capture those really quick spare of the moment moments that <laughs> you just, you can't reproduce. You know, someone cheering or having a laugh, you know, even if you ask them, hey, can you do that again? Which is not really appropriate for a shoot like that. You know, it's just not the same. You can't reproduce that authenticity. So having something that is just so reliable and really good autofocus while being sharp, and versatile with the zoom from 24 to 70. It was just amazing. So why does that footage look so sexy? Why don't we go over some of the specs of this lens? What's new in it? Well, it's got a new de-clickable aperture ring. It also has a new smooth and tight option for your zoom. So if you wanna adjust the torque, whether you wanna do zoom crashes or a slow zoom on the lens to go from 24 to 70 or whatever focal length, you can adjust that now. It's 20% lighter than the original G Master 24 to 70 at 695 grams. And it is also 11% shorter. And something else that not a lot of other people are talking about, which is actually a really cool feature, is that the center of gravity is actually being moved back towards the mount. So it's really easy now for handling and for balancing on gimbals as well. It also has improved weather sealing and coating on the front element as well to protect against dust and fingerprints. It's also got this new XD linear autofocus. Now I've got no idea what it means, but what I do know is that it is fast, it is reliable, and it is very sticky. If you select what you want to focus on, it sticks to it. I mean, you can adjust it if you need to in your settings, depending on what camera you've got. But yeah, it is fantastic. It also now has a minimum focal distance at 21 centimeters at 24 mil and at 70 mil at 30 centimeters, which is fantastic for getting nice and close for your detail shots, for that juicy B-roll, especially if you've got a nice plate of duck that's been cooked on puree and potatoes. Oh my goodness, so good. So the very first full frame lens I ever bought was the Tamron 28 to 75 f 2.8, which at the time, excellent value for money and image quality that you got from it for the price was just excellent. At the time, the Sigma 24 to 70 wasn't out yet. And the original G Master 24 to 70 from Sony was just completely out of my price range. It was just out of my budget. But as time went on, I found that I was using that lens less and less. I was going for the Sony 35 f 1.8 or the 85 f 1.8 from Sony as well. And the Tamron was just sitting at home collecting dust and I just, I wasn't enjoying using that lens anymore. But now fast forward to the Sony G Master 24 to 70 Mark II. I'm really loving this focal length. It is just so enjoyable to use and it's so versatile. 
So what does this lens enable you to do? Well, since getting the Sony 24 to 70 G Master Mark II, I have found it's been so versatile for so many different scenarios. It is so good for product photography and food and drinks and cocktails. Oh, it is so good for that stuff with the, the minimum focal distance. But it's also been good for Airbnb photography, which I do a lot of, but it's also really good for your run and gun shoots and also locked off on a tripod. Yes, I know it is f2.8 and not as wide open as f1.8 or wider on your fixed lenses, but honestly, how often do you shoot at that? And if you do, you can always go and grab those lenses if you need it for those situations. Having the flexibility to change your focal length just by twisting the zoom ring is so good. You know, if you're on a fixed lens and you need to change your focal length, fluffing about in your camera bag, you just, you either, you can't be bothered or you're missing the shot because you're not at the right focal distance. You know, if you're on an 85 and you're in a tight space, you back up against the wall, you can't go back any further. In reality, it's allowing you to be present and able to capture more at your shoots, knowing that the image quality that comes out of this lens is as good, or in some cases better, than other prime lenses that are out there. Yeah, it is that good. So back to the question, what does this lens enable you to do? As you get further along in your career doing photography and video, you're going to be working with clients that have higher expectations, bigger clients, bigger budgets, and they're gonna expect more from you and your gear. So having a lens like this in your kit means that you're gonna be able to deliver high quality photography and video for your clients. And you know what that means? That means bigger budgets, more money in your pocket. So you're actually investing in yourself and your career. So who's this lens for? Well, I'm gonna be completely honest. If you were just starting out in photography and video, this lens is not for you. If you are just taking photos here and there on the weekend, or you're just starting out, this lens, it's not worth the investment. Unless you have really deep pockets and money to burn and you must have the best of the best and there's nothing else that is better than this lens, then get it. It is a fantastic lens. But to start off with, if you're starting your career, I actually would recommend the Tamron 28 to 75 generation two or the Sigma 24 to 70. They are both fantastic lenses, great value for money and the image quality that you get from them for what you pay are actually really good. This lens is for professionals. So if you're working with big clients and big budgets, then this lens is a must. As I said earlier, I'm just blown away by the image quality and how versatile this zoom lens is. I just, I love working with it. So is it worth the $2,300 price tag? Well, if you're a working professional creative, then yes, it is worth the price. It is so versatile. The image quality that you get from it is incredible. And for the price, it is worth the investment. You'll get bigger paying clients, working with bigger budgets, and you'll make that money back after a few shoots. So yes, this lens is a must. If you like this video or if you found it informative, please hit the like button and please consider hitting the subscribe button as well. This is my very first YouTube video and I've got lots of videos in the works. I'm looking forward to bringing them to you. So please join me on the journey. Thanks for watching.